Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Hot Toys Attack of the Clones 20th Anniversary Star Wars 1-6 scale figure unboxing and review. Today, finally, we're taking a look at a Hot Toys clanker, none other than the B1 Battle Droid Geonosis version. I got mine from ToysWonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in four plus a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon, and join button, so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, this is pretty boring. Underneath this slipcover, however, it's about to get a lot more exciting. Up front, an image of the B1 battle droid. Yes, that's the actual figure. Star Wars with this metallic foil finish, and down below, battle droid. In brackets, Geonosis. On the side of the box, kind of, uh, nothing. We've got a grey section, a black section, Disney, and the Star Wars logo. Plus his name, just one more time. On the back of the box, warnings and legal info. It's bog standard. Do let me know in the comments section how many of these guys are you getting? I've picked up two for now, but I could potentially pick up some more in the future. I'm a fan of getting two of each. Two troopers, two battle droids, two stormtroopers, and that's kind of enough for me. Then again, army building some clankers, it's not the worst idea. Oh, Hot Toys, you are spoiling us. This box art is so much more like it. Very vintage and Kenner inspired. We have another image of the battle droid, an open window showcasing him inside, his name in a very beautiful yellow nameplate. It pops against the rest of the packaging. Star Wars Attack of the Clones. And finally, the foil sticker that says 20th anniversary of Attack of the Clones. That's not it though, this top cover, it's magnetic. You can open it up and get a much better view of the figure inside. Don't forget, his name, Battle Droid Geonosis version, is down below. This cardboard is very heavy duty, it's nice and thick and sturdy. On the side of the box, a blue sky, not sure why that's blue though, considering the rest of the anniversary figures from Attack of the Clones, they had an orange background. This, after all, they say it plain as day is the Geonosis version. We have the Trade Federation or Separatist logo and a little bio. Feel free to pause to read. Hey, hey, don't get me wrong, I like the blue. It's a decent contrast with the battle droid himself. He's this orangish red colour, and if the background was orange, he might have blended in just a little bit too much. We have Star Wars Attack the Clones up top and down below, the very same warnings and legal info that we saw on the slipcover. Oh, make no mistake, this is the first time we're seeing the mould. It is not the last. Hot Toys, they are going to get their money's worth, and fingers crossed, so are we. If this isn't your preferred look for the battle droids in the orange colour scheme, fret not. I wouldn't be surprised if, not long from now, Hot Toys announce one of the other colour variants. Either the standard tan ones, or the security droids with the red stripe, or the commanders with the circle, there are so many options. Weigh in down below, let me know which look for the battle droids is your favourite. First in-hand impressions, really good, he is lightweight, however, very very sturdy. This guy, he could have easily been a floppy mess, thank goodness he isn't. So far so good. What we are going to do now though is get all of his accessories laid out in the light box and take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base. Remember this thing? This is what they gave us with the Jawas. If you're thinking, oh god no, please, surely they didn't use it again. Thankfully, no, they didn't. They learnt their lesson this was an awful experiment. It felt cheap and nasty because it was cheap and nasty. Luckily with this guy, the battle droid, this display base and this sand piece is actually fully sculpted. And it's removable. If you don't want it there, no worries. You can still have some sand, but it's completely flat on the top of the base itself. It's got this rough textured finish to it. Up front it says Star Wars and Battle Droid. Then up top, a crotch grabber. Now the sand piece itself, I love the sculpt. It looks very similar to the Jawa display base. Just better in every way. There's texture, we also have multiple layers of paint, a dark wash in the crevices, and then a lighter wash on top, or maybe even some dry brushing. Poor Gonk and Jawa, they deserved better with the display base. I mean, now that they're doing it this way, you can actually use the crotch grabber. Whereas with Gonk and Jawa, you couldn't, because the display base cover piece of trash thing 
covered up the actual hole that the crotch grabber would peg into. You do get multiple antenna options with the battle droid. These are real metal, you'll see how this attaches later. And we also get the backpack with integrated antennas. There's a clip on the side for the blaster, I have thoughts about this. And around the back, it's actually fully finished. There are paint applications on the back side of the backpack as well. On the back of the backpack. Yep, I did say that. C-3PO's head sculpt is a neat accessory. We've got this little piece down below in case you want to have his head just lying around in the display. Or you can switch it out for this one with a ball joint and a connector at the bottom. Because this head sculpt can be installed on the battle droid body. The finish... Stunning. It looks like aged worn metal. There's speckling everywhere. There are washers in the crevices and it's got, it still has a luster to it, even though it's quite filthy. His eyes are lit up. You can see the three dots and the pupil, if you will. And then this piece over the top, that's the grate, is actually made of metal. Overall, I like the C-3PO head sculpt. The only issue is if you're army building, you're gonna have a whole ton of these. Maybe that's not an issue though, maybe you do want a whole ton of C-3PO head sculpts, you weirdo, what the hell do you want that for? You do get this blaster, which is an all new sculpt. Of course, we're not counting this one because it's permanently attached to this severed droid arm. Now it does look like it was a separate sculpt, however, yeah, this new one is a hair smaller. The sculpt is sharp, I love the silver, and there's some dry brushing on the surface. It looks suitably metallic. Did I also describe C-3PO's head sculpt as suitably metallic? I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. He does come with some macro binoculars. These look great. We've got these translucent red lenses, green around the front, dirt and grime, and a lot of chipping, as though the white paint on the macro binoculars has worn away. He also has some little receptacles, and it's perfectly sculpted to go around his head sculpt. You will see him holding this later on. What we are going to do now, though, is get the battle droid himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. I'm going to make this just so simple for you. If you're a fan of the B1 battle droid, specifically in this colorway, or maybe you're recreating the Battle of Geonosis in the display, Get this guy, maybe even get a few of them, because like the plain white clone trooper, once they are gone, they're gone. Hot Toys, they do not seem interested in having you army build anything, which isn't ideal because I really want to. These guys, they are spot on to the movie. They're spindly, they're tall, they're lanky, they look fragile, yet they so aren't. They're surprisingly well put together, it's totally a non-issue. They also come with all the little swap out backpack pieces so you can interchange the parts and have different looks if you want. And then the finish. Even from a distance, you can see how lush it is. There is a lot of depth to the paint. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the head sculpt. It looks like a battle droid, so that's a huge tick. I don't really know what else to say. The shape, to me at least, looks really accurate. It's rounded up on top with the snoot, and on the underside, it's completely flat, with some sculpted detail tucked up under there as well. All of the panel lines are sharp, especially the ones around the back. These linkages, they're all individual moving pieces. So when it comes to articulation, they will move out of your way no problem whatsoever. Then for the paint applications, that's where this guy really starts to shine. Not literally. This guy is done from head to toe in a matte finish, which is perfect. I have no complaints with the way this guy is painted. There's this base layer of this almost pinkish orange, then over the top of that, so many paint applications. We've got silver sections, which would kind of signify the metal, exposed as the paint is scuffed off. You have some black speckling and also some darker red speckling. Then because all of these panel lines, they're individual little pieces of plastic just placed together, those lines are real, meaning when the washers sink into them, they are super well defined. And that goes for pretty much all the panel lines here. Overall, like I said, I'm really happy with the finish. Around the back, we have options. If you prefer not to go with the backpack, you can do that. The backpack is totally removable. And we'll get there in just a second. On the backpack itself, however, we do have a clip to hold the blaster, if you so choose, or you can just straight up take the clip out. His antenna, they're also extendable. 
and they are made of metal. So no worries about breakage, which is absolutely a good thing. If these things were made out of thin plastic, oh my word, they would have been really fragile. Then the finish on the backpack, beautiful. Just like when we were discussing the head sculpt, it's painted in the same way. You've got the black speckling, you've got the silver sections, and you also have that red dirt and grime on the surface. You can simply remove it and Look at that, there is even more paint underneath the backpack because this is actually meant to be exposed. You can then bring in this little piece and he still has some antennas. Or antennae? Do let me know in the comment section, is it antennas or is it antennae? After all, he isn't a bug. Now, this one does have the little rubbery hose down below or what would normally be a wire. And you do have a cap piece for the other side. If you would like to go with no antennas at all, you can then bring in this cap piece and would you look at that, he's completely clean on the back. I really like having multiple options here. Rather than just selling you multiple different versions of battle droids, the backpack version, then the no backpack version, this one has all the options right off the bat. And that kind of bodes well for the normal battle droids. If we get the tan ones with all of these options, oh. I'm going to be one really stoked collector. This must have been an engineering nightmare for Hot Toys, having all of these holes in the design, I mean, holes in the forearms, holes in the torso, and having everything as thin as it is. I'm really impressed with how this guy turned out. You even have little teeny ball joints on these sections and some proper working pistons. Plus... Look up underneath there, there are holes. And he can do transport mode. You can collapse this guy up into his most compact form. I will show you how to do that. Don't worry, in just a second. The finish on the front, exactly the same as the back and the rest of him. Meaning very, very well weathered. Seeing as though these guys were trotting around on Geonosis, they would be sandblasted. So it makes sense that there are so many sections where there is silver poking through. The only complaint I have is that the weathering is the exact same on every battle droid. So if you get multiple Geonosis battle droids, yep, they are going to look exactly the same. They're weathered in all the same spots. I do particularly like the silver they've used here though. It's super shiny. It almost looks like metal where at the same time it's not metal. It is just paint on sculpted plastic pieces. Initially, I was worried that this was going to be a downright pain in the ass. Trying to get him to hold his blaster with these spindly little fingers, nuh -uh. I thought I would be struggling forever. Luckily, it's not a huge issue. Now, it's not the sturdiest connection in the world. However, when you do have it in there and you have all the fingers clamped around it, it's pretty darn secure. As you can see, it's not really going anywhere. Coming down to the legs, the skinniness, the spindliness, if you will, continues. They look really frail. They don't feel it though, like I've said a couple of times now, they feel really nice and sturdy. Some of my favourite details, I like these grills on the thighs with the washers in the crevices, the ribbed sections for the hip skirts, and the bright shiny silver metallic in the joints. If you think about it, putting that silver in the joints, it just makes sense. If these were real droids sent onto the battlefield after being painted up by the Separatists, the paint in the high traffic joints, it would wear away very, very quickly. So having the bright shiny silver there, yeah, totally fitting. Then around the back, one of my other favourite features, the spring-loaded calves, which will come into play not only for transport mode, but also for articulation. For his feet... They're very square, and they do provide a nice planted base. They're not too small, and they're also not too big. They fit in proportion. I was worried that these would be too loose, and the ball joints wouldn't be able to hold his weight. Totally a non-issue. These guys can absolutely stand. In normal droid mode, can he stand well in transport mode? Now that is an entirely different question. To get started with transformation to transport mode, the first thing you want to do is slide down his antennas. Then you want to slide down his telescopic neck and move his head forward as far as it will possibly go. When you slide it all the way down, this piece will kind of spring up and sit over the top of his backpack connector. Next, around the back, this can be a little bit challenging the first couple of times. The more you do this, the more easy it gets, maybe? You want to remove this piece from underneath this little ledge here. 
it's really fiddly to get up under there, but like I said, the more you do it, the more you know what you're looking for. These next pieces, unfortunately, they do not want to come out. We need them to though, so we're just gonna have to remove them. This bracket section, it's actually a little piston. This is a separate piece to the bottom portion. You have to remove both of them, and the best way I've found to do it is literally just to kind of turn them on their side and they will eventually pop out. They do feel a little bit fragile though, so please, be careful. Then you want to bring in this piece and plug it in down below. Do that for both sides. Next up, you want to remove his legs as far up as they will go, and now the spring-loaded calf starts to make a lot more sense. You want to collapse it down and push it so the spring-loaded piece is tucked up on the inside. Then you want to open up his hands and wrap them around his ankles. Once again, repeat that on both sides. Oh yes, he balances no problem, even in transport mode. Now the center of gravity is kind of here towards the front half because he's leaning forward. So when you are trying to balance him, give him a little tilt and what do you know, he does stand. In my display, am I ever going to use this? No, of course not. I actually want my battle droids activated and ready for battle. It's still a really nice touch though, being able to have this guy crunch down super far, it shows that the engineering is very impressive. You might see me popping C-3PO's head sculpt on the battle droid body and say, uh uh not for me, no thank you, I'm not even going to try it once with my figure, I'm just going to keep him as the battle droid. Or you might find it really awesome and you'll want to do it as well. If that's the case, okay, pop off the battle droid head sculpt, it's just on a ball joint slide down the neck as far as it will go and don't worry it can't go too far there's a stopper so the ball joint will still sit in position then after attaching the correct little ball joint receptacle to c-3po's head pop it on the body and oh my this looks really freaking goofy but it is accurate to the movie of course he does have his head on a battle droid body in attack of the clones it is too big for the body that's fine, that's exactly how it should look. I am tempted to display him like this every now and then, or maybe at least until we get the Hot Toys C-3PO from Attack of the Clones. For now, yeah, it's kind of funny looking. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, on the left, the Hot Toys Battle Droid, Geonosis version, and on the right, the Sideshow one, just the regular old tan Battle Droid. While I prefer the color scheme of the tan, there is no denying the Hot Toys Battle Droid is a straight up superior figure. It does have a lot of years on the Sideshow one and I don't want to take anything away from that figure. It was a really good offering back in the day. Nowadays, he cannot stand at all. I do not know how he has stayed standing for this long for this segment. This bastard falls over constantly in the display and he'll hit someone else and he'll topple another five figures over. So freaking annoying. I cannot wait for Hot Toys to give us this battle droid with this sick mold in the proper color scheme. Wait, no, I take that back. Not the proper color scheme, just my preferred color scheme. Because the Geonosis version is still accurate to Geonosis, where this version of the battle droid would have battled this version of the clone trooper, the phase one. And he just also happens to be part of the 20th anniversary Attack of the Clones line. The clone trooper is a little bit shorter than the battle droid. Now that doesn't really help him, it doesn't make the B1 look more imposing than the clone trooper, he's still spindly, he's still goofy looking, and the clone trooper, he looks like he can kick the battle droid's butt. Which, as we know from the Clone Wars and Attack of the Clones, they do. Now this is something, if you're planning on picking up two battle droids, one to flank Dooku on either side, you could do a hell of a lot worse in the display. In fact, that's what I'm going to do. I picked up two of these bad boys so I can do exactly that. Also, Dooku is taller than the battle droids. Who would have guessed? Christopher Lee fans? Probably, I would imagine he was a very tall dude after all. Now, here we have still the battle droid, but the C-3PO version. He's wearing the C-3PO head sculpt. If you picked up episode 2 R2-D2 to pair with this particular monstrosity of a C-3PO, well, there you go, that's what that looks like. Going over articulation, if you're not expecting a lot from this guy, I don't blame you. I sure as shit wasn't, I thought for sure this design does not lend itself to good articulation. The funny thing is, it is good. Starting off with the head sculpt, it's on a double ball peg. Looking forward to there, looking back to there, this piece is articulated, it gets out of your way. You also get swivel and pivot side to side. Then at the base of the neck, a hinge. 
combined forward to there and up to there. Don't forget this neck can collapse and you can use that to your advantage. If you want to fake a pivot by tucking in one side, you totally can. The arms have articulated shoulder pads. They will go up to there. They will go forward and back. No butterfly joint as expected. Swivel at the bicep, single bend at the elbow going past 90. A double ball peg for the wrist, meaning you can get in and out and up and down. For the thumb, a ball joint and a hinge. Then for the other fingers, multiple little hinges. The torso does crunch forward and back, swivel and pivot. These are some actual working pistons that do go in and out. The legs will go up to there, all the way forward. Great for transport mode, going back to there. Going out just a little, understandably limited by the design. You don't have any swivel at the thigh, all of the swivel comes from the hip joint, and you don't get a ton. For the knee, however, you do. It goes way past 90. There's a groove, and this piece, it nicely tucks into it. So when you collapse it up, like I said, really good for transport mode. Then for the feet, a double ball peg, going forward and back, swivel, and pivot side to side. Moving on to the three cool and three annoying things. The first annoying thing is either really going to bug you or not bug you at all. It's just down to personal preference. It's the teeny tiny plastic clip on the side of his backpack. You can remove it, however when you do, there's now a gaping hole. Which I don't think is that much better than just leaving the clip there. My perfect world solution, a magnet in the blaster and a magnet in the backpack. While it might not have been as secure as the clip is, it would have looked way better. The second annoying thing is the only loose part on my entire battle droid. It's this little dongle on the back of his head sculpt. I have no idea why it's as loose as it is. Either way, I reckon this piece should be as sturdy as the rest of him. The third annoying thing, yep, gratuitous droid crotch shot. It's this seam line right here. There is no reason for that seam line not to be on the bottom. They put it smack bang in the center, then when they've done the wash, it's sunk into that crevice. So it's way more obvious than it needs to be. The first cool thing is how many options we have for the back of the battle droid. You can go with antenna or without. You have cap pieces that are included to cover up the holes. Or you can go with the backpack. You can customize your droid army if you want them all being controlled by a separatist ship. Pop the backpacks on. If not, ditch the antennas entirely. The second cool thing, it's gotta be transport mode. The fact that he has the ability to do this and still retains a ton of articulation and all the joints are nice and stiff and he can hold a pose, just very impressive. The third cool thing, while this is technically a battle droid, it also kinda sorta is C-3PO. This is now our first official Hot Toy C-3PO. If you enjoyed the scene in the movie where his head was strapped onto a battle droid body and seeing C-3PO as prim and proper as he is blasting people left and right, then you can now recreate that in 1-6 scale. If you don't want to, then you also just have a spare C-3PO head sculpt in the box. For a bonus cool thing, chances are you might not actually care about this, on the back of the instructions is a poster. And it's a different poster compared to the rest of the figures in the line. Every 20th anniversary Attack of the Clones figure, it seems, is coming with a different poster. This time, instead of being portrait, it's landscape. Also, Hot Toys, don't tease us. You know we need a Zam. Make it happen. Wrapping up on the Hot Toys B1 Battle Droid, their first one. Also, C-3PO? Yeah, okay. This is the battle droid from the Battle of Geonosis from Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Not the first appearance of the battle droid, that was in Episode 1. These guys are great. I have literally no complaints. They're sturdy, they can pose surprisingly well. I like the display base, I like the weapon they come with, I dig the swap out backpack pieces, even though the clip is frustrating, it is not a deal breaker. Not at all. What may be a deal breaker is the colour. If you're sitting here waiting for a regular tan battle droid, I do not blame you, not one bit. That is the more iconic look for the battle droid. This one is very, very movie and scene specific. So, unless you're picking up Attack of the Clones figures, I would say just wait. Don't dump a ton of money into these guys. Get the tan ones when they're eventually released. These ones... They may not actually fit into your collection as much as it pains me to say that because they are really, really good. At the end of the day, 
it's all down to personal preference. Now I got mine from toyswonderland.com. Link for that is in the description below. They have pay in four and a loyalty program. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button. If you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.